day to be a stylist? Um, I sort of did it by accident because I was going to be a sound engineer in a music studio. Uh -huh. I went to Soho for my job, got it, and there was a waiting list for six weeks. And while I was waiting, my mother, who was a hairdresser in the East End, she was trained by Teasy Weezy, uh, Raymond, a very famous hairdresser of the 50s and 60s. Um, she said, why don't you go and wash hair in the local salon uh, while you're waiting for your placement. Um, so that's what I did. I went and uh, worked in the local salon and I lasted about an hour. And then um, they said you need to be in the West End. It's quite a wacky dresser then. I was already wearing makeup and stuff. So I went to work at a company called Crimpers, who were the original staff from Vidal Sassoon. They were the original juniors trained by him. So I realised I was in the presence of greatness straight away. And within no time at all, I was well latched into it and did my apprenticeship in 10 months. And I was cutting hair in Knightsbridge at 17. Really? Yeah, and I was just... Loved it. Amazing. It is a great trade, and I'm actually now realising I'm a third generation hairdresser. Yeah. So, my grandfather was a hairdresser, oh, mother, really? and now me. So. Wonderful. And who's your idol in the industry? It would be Vidal Sassoon. And for that reason? Um, because he bought to, um, in my generation, he bought. Um, precision cutting and that's absolutely perfect work to the forefront. Um, there's a lot of hairdressers out there that have made it, but they work a lot softer. And I like really precision work. That's what I like. Uh, I enjoy soft cutting and stuff when it's needed, but it has to be done very well with a very good technique. And I'm very fussy about that. The highest point in my career. It's probably my first hair show in Los Angeles when I was mistaken for a member of the Motley Crew. <laughs> the Motley Crew were on after us, a uh, big, big place in, um, big place in LA, and we were taken in a limousine. And I was only young; I was only 19. We were taken in a white limousine to. Um, the valley with uh, this big hairdressing show and, um, and when we were coming out the back I realised that someone said the Motley Crew were playing there that night and as I came out the back a lot of girls thought I was one of them and jumped me and that was the high point. Yeah. Nothing to do with hairdressing. <laughs> <laughs> what part of your kit could you not live without excluding scissors? What part of your uh, what part of my kit? Probably be my, um, well, the obvious ones my blow dryer. But, um, I don't know, my personality, I'd say. That's part of my toolbox. Yeah. It should be part of every, everyone's toolbox. Great. Who rocks the best sexy hairstyle? Who's got the best sexy hairstyle? I don't know, I don't know, there's a lot of good stuff out there at the moment. I like big hair. I've always liked big hair because I was kind of born into that era of big hair, you know, fire a faucet and big blow dryers and all that stuff. Dolly Parton. Good. I would say. Yeah. Who's your favourite actor? Um, Jennifer Lawrence. Where did I get mine? For yourself. You know, if you're if you're an artistic person, then Don't everything you look at is art. Everything you look at. Now Tom the cameraman knows that because we've had this chat. Whatever you look at, something is lit or it isn't lit well. Something is um, is placed well or it's not placed well. The haircut's cut or it's not cut. It's all art. Looking at that chair and that table over there and that gentleman sitting there, that's a fantastic photograph. So that's what I get my inspiration. Everything. Just everything you look at. People say, I'm looking at Tom's hair, I'm looking at your hair looks nice today. And <laughs> I just, you know, you just look at things and you get inspiration from other things. You can't you can't just be like that. So all inspiration's all around you. Yeah. What are your top key products and why? Top key products, hairspray. Um, something to control hair so that when you're blow drying or using rollers, it stays where you put it. Because, you know, people tend to overwash their hair because they want to be clean these days. But the problem with that, of course, is to get less control. In my mum's day, when she was back combing and doing hairstyles, women didn't wash their hair all the time. They'd come in halfway through the week and have what's called a comb out. 
so that it would be, um, you'd have this fantastic set or whatever, and then it would just be recombed into place. If you start washing it and putting conditioner on it and everything like that, it's going to not do anything. So I would say, what I like about Big Sexy here is they put a lot of emphasis in that particular range on style, styling product, not so much shampoo and stuff. Because that is important, but it should be very separate. Styling products should be very separate from shampoo. What's your favourite product cocktail? Cocktail? Product cocktail. Well actually, I'll tell you what I do. I use hairspray, Big Sexy hairspray, and before Big Sexy hair came along, I use any hairspray to blow dry with. I'd actually blow dry or I'd wrap the rollers with the hairspray. But you can use hairspray like a root lifter as your, as your blow dry. So yeah, I like hairspray a lot. Just answer our next question as well. So that's your best sexy hair tip. Wrap and roll. You know. What iconic hairstyle would you like to see make a comeback? Oh, definitely uh, some of Twiggy's hairstyles. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 60s was, that was the best era because of Vidal's son, because of Harold Layton, and because of a lot of people that um, a lot of people haven't heard of. Um, I interviewed a lot of these old guys. Um, I don't know whether they're still alive now, but for instance, um, I think Xavier still might be still uh, around, but Xavier uh, was Raymond Teasy Weezy's manager. I interviewed him. He did, he's done very, very well in the property industry, I believe, but he was always a fantastic hairdresser. Okay, excellent. Um, just move on from sexy hair. Um, just a quick question about Eagle Professional. Why yeah. is it you've, cho you've chosen tool at the moment? Well, because whoever designed that, obviously understands ergonomics and when you pick the blow dryer up it fits in your hand beautifully it's the right amount of power it just when you're working with it you, you, you know it, it just works it's a good it's a good blow dryer the uh, the irons some genius has come up with a sort of ribbing on the back of those irons so when you're rolling them you, you know it keeps the hair in place so it's absolutely fantastic so it's a very ergonomic um, product and um, it's, make, it's an eco product, so I would say I'm becoming a, an eco centric through, through that product. <laughs> nice to meet you, Christine.